Welcome to Find Truth 88, and this is Marcus. And as my wife uh, normally does on these End Times videos, she shares a word of exhortation, so here she is. Well, as I shared in the last video, Joshua 1, 8, study his word, meditate on it day and night. Well, that's where I ended it at last time. But I want to go on to finish reading, because there's not even a comma in there, so I want to finish reading what it actually says. It's after day and night, it says, So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. And only then will you prosper and succeed in what you do. So if we leave out part of this, that scripture, we're not going to learn anything. We're not going to prosper in it. That's why he wants us to study it, read it, and meditate on it so that we will succeed and prosper in what we do. You know, and too, as, as we seek the Word of God, that's how we get a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we get to know God. We get to know Him through the Scriptures. You know, we all are going to make mistakes in our life from time to time. So obviously, you know, the, the Lord doesn't expect us to be flawless. So we're, the mistakes are going to be there, but the Lord does expect us to give us to give him us our hearts. And so, yeah, I want to take you to uh, first or Titus chapter one, verse 16. It says that they profess that they know God, but in works. Now, I, I want to be clear in this because nowadays you have to, because people are running around calling everything works of law, works of law. He's talking about works that are produced by the Holy Spirit here. But in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate good works that are produced by the Holy Spirit. So many claim to know God, many claim to be followers of Christ. You know, uh, what would you think if you got married and your spouse just up and ran off and says, okay, now that we said the I do's, I'm going to hit the road and I'm never going to see you again. You know, something's wrong about that. I mean, that would be like the person never really gave uh, gave their heart and that they never planned to have a relationship with that spouse. They just wanted to go through the motions and then hit the road. And sadly, many are doing that in the body of Christ. You know, you hear this teaching that, oh, uh, just grace only and that's it. And the funny thing is, that I, I have not been able to find that grace only scripture that people are quoting. They don't actually give a verse when they quote it. They just say it. And then they get, you know, that's kind of fun. But anyway, uh, Ephesians 2, 8 does go on to say that we're saved by grace through faith. Galatians three fourteen says that we're saved through faith. That's how we receive the promise, through faith. You know, there's a popular scripture in Philippians that says that, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, imagine if we took out that last part and just said, I can do all things. Well, sadly, I think that's what the problem is with a lot of the church. They just think they can do all things. So we have to take the word of God when we read it and read it as it is, as it is and not change the scripture, not change Jesus. Uh, we have to be happy with who Jesus is. Happy with our relationship with him. You know, we have to be in love with Jesus, in love with his word. Over in Matthew chapter 7, the Lord's talking about seekers. Matthew 7, 7. He's talking about seekers. He's talking about the church being seekers. Are we going to be seekers? Luke 18, same thing. Are we going to be seekers? Are we, are we going to have that persistent faith? Hebrews eleven six. Are we going to have a persistent faith? Are we going to be hungry and seek the Lord? You know, Jesus said in Matthew or, or in Luke six forty six, why do you call me Lord if you refuse to do the things that I say? So are we going to be that? Are we going to be a, a, a body of followers? Or are we just going to be part of the hype crowd? You know, Jesus says in, 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 in Matthew chapter seven, verse 20, we're both, wherefore by their fruits, you will know them. You will know them by their fruits. You'll know them how uh, by how they live their life, by their lifestyle. You know, I, I said in the last video, if I went out and started my car and the engine's running, but then I go to the exhaust pipe and there's no exhaust coming out. Well, uh, hello, the, 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 car's, the car's not running, okay? The car's not running. When, when the engine's running, you're going to get exhaust. 
But when we're, when the Bible says that, that the just led by faith, when we led by faith, there's going to be work, there's going to be works, good works of the Holy Spirit to follow along with it. They go hand in hand. That's what James was teaching in James chapter one and two. That's what Jesus taught on in Matthew chapter seven. That's what Paul was teaching on in Galatians chapter five, Galatians chapter six. In Galatians chapter six, Paul says that be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man reaps, that will he, whichever a man sows, that shall he reap. That's what Paul's saying. Because you go back to chapter five, he's talking about either living in the works of the flesh or the fruit of the spirit. He's saying, which one are you sowing into? So yes, there are going to be works in our life. There's a difference between works of law and works of flesh. We have to get into the scripture and get an understanding of that. It's just, it's just plain common sense. It's really, you know, I will say it like this. It's kind of pathetic to say that, you know, I'm a, I believe in Christ, but I don't follow him. <laughs> what? What? That's why he told the young rich ruler, uh, sell all you have, take up your cross and come follow after me. He told the very first disciples to, uh, uh, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The very first disciples, that's what he said. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So when we follow after Christ, we become, a, we become effective for the kingdom of God. We're not going to be on that, but see, there's a body of believers that are rising up and saying, I don't want to be part of that broad path anymore. There's a body of believers rising up saying this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It's time that we rise up and let our light shine. Just like in Matthew chapter five, that's what that comes from. That's where Jesus was talking about. Do not hide your light under a bushel. But that we shine our light. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The scripture also says that we walk by faith, not by sight. As, our, as his word leads us, every step we take, we walk by faith. And our faith produces Good works. Our faith produces the fruit of the spirit in our life. You know, if I if I believe there was a pallet of gold sitting in the street right now, I would not be doing this video. I would be running and collecting the gold. See, my faith causes action. My faith causes me to act. It's it's just totally hilarious when I hear people say that they're in the faith, but they're not. There's there's no good works producing in their life. There's no good works of the Holy Spirit producing in their life. Jesus likened that man who, who built his house upon rock. He says, I, I will liken that man to a, to, to, to a wise man. But he says, the foolish, stupid man is the one who rejected my words, didn't want to hear my words. And that's why he said in verse 21 through 23 of Matthew chapter 7, I will say unto the one who disregards my word, depart from me, you who acted wickedly, disregarding my commandments. So yes, we're to be followers of Jesus Christ. Come on, hello. We're to be followers of Christ, followers of his word. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. The very first, <coughs> excuse me, the very first disciples. He said to follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's how we become effective for the body of Christ. We follow after Christ. That's how we make an impact and get people saved. Is by his spirit, by the leading of his spirit in our life. So it's 2013. It's the end times. End times, 2013. The arrival of the new world order. You know, and as we are aware, this is the, the new world order has been, been the infrastructure, I should say, has been being put into place for many years, step at a time, event at a time, things and laws have changed in our land, uh, benefiting or turning toward this one world government, this new world order, this police state. You know, uh, you know, we can look as far as back to Andrew Jackson and his battle with the central bank. Andrew Jackson did not believe in having a central bank. He did not believe in having private, privately owned banks uh, issuing out the currency for our nation. He saw the corruption in that. He saw the evil in that, how they could control uh, the systems and, and twist them, twist it. 
It is Andrew Jackson who actually said it is to be regretted that the rich and powerful too often bend the acts of government to their own selfish purposes. See, Andrew Jackson saw the danger in having a central bank and having them issue our currency. And he fought against it. You know, he had an assassination attempt against his life. You know, the powerful, when they don't want to get their way, they will do anything to get their way. You know, it is also said that 98% of the wealth is owned by 2% of the population. You know, it's also said that, that, that the uh, Rothschild family, one of the richest on the planet, obviously, uh, has, has in the upwards of 400 trillion uh, in their accounts, uh, or they, they own up in the upwards of $400 trillion. You know, and I'm not going to de debate with the numbers, but we know that there are some very rich and powerful elites on the planet. And when you have money uh, and you own the banking industries uh, or, or influence them, uh, the healthcare and ph pharmaceuticals, and this is what I'm reading off the left side of the board here, energy and oil, media, education, you start to affect the home, the family, and sadly, the church. Because there's many coward preachers and teachers who will not stand up and teach the truth of the word of God. But they're more concerned about how many people are going to fill up in their church because that's donations. They're, they're concerned about donations. You know, we even see this on YouTube. You know, thank God for the preachers and teachers of the word of God who are receiving donations. And helping others by sharing and, and giving Bibles and helping those get food. And so, you know, I'm not talking about those who who, who take uh, the, the, the donations and help others with it. But there are some who take donations simply because of the fact that uh, they don't want to get a job. And they don't want to work. And then they teach these watered down messages that are not feeding the flock they are not feeding the church. They're, 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 they're teaching the milk of the word of God, if at best the milk of the word of God, and, and teach anything far from the meat of the word, which causes a watered down, a watered down a version, which is teaching a watered down version of the word of God, which, uh, you know, in turn gives a, you know, there, there's a weak following. You know, people are not, uh, for the most part, so many are not into the word of the God. They're not, they're not into the word. They're not into the meat of the word. Thus, they're not strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So we want to be strong in the word of God. And again, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says he, he would liken the one who stood upon the rock as the wise man, the rock of the word of God. Psalms chapter 40 says, you know, he set my, he pulled me out of the miry clay and set my feet up on a rock and put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. And many shall see it and come to the Lord because of it. Talking about that light again, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Are you going to let your light shine? Are you going to be on fire for Christ? Or are you going to live a lukewarm life and says, I'll do it my way? See, Jesus is not fooled by our lips. Really, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, that's exactly what Jesus is saying. He's saying, I don't care about your lying lips. I want your heart. Your lips telling, telling lies, that's not what I'm looking at. Many are professing to be Christians, but yet they're not living after Christ. They're not, they're not hungry for Christ. They don't love God. They just pray to prayer. They took a pill. Take this pill and don't change anything and you're just going to lose weight. Sprinkle some powder over here and, and then everything will change. But you just stay the same. And then that's what the that's what preachers and teachers are teaching so much now. It's just say this prayer. Don't change your heart. Don't give the Lord your heart. That's not about you loving it. Just say a prayer and then keep living. And unfortunately, some believe that. Many believe that. That I can just change the tag on the top of the door. And that's that. But that's not what the Lord says. First Samuel 16, 7 says that the that the that, that that God doesn't see as man sees. That man looks on the outward, but God looks on the inward. Romans 10, 9 through 13. It says that if we believe with our heart, and say if we believe with our lips, 
It says that we believe with our heart. You know, Jesus, when he took, uh, was speaking with the young ruler, he was looking at the, the young ruler's heart. See, the young ruler, rich ruler, had all the works to show for it. But the Lord was looking at his heart. You see, money had his heart. First Timothy 6.10 says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's so sad to see preachers and teachers more concerned about money versus teaching the truth of the word of God. And so this is where this influence is gone. This banking elite that has the, 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 the power grab over the media, over the education. You know, if we, if we can keep the generation dumbed down, then hello, I mean, then, then, then they're gonna, they're gonna be ignorant and, and not seek after truth. They're gonna be more concerned on the new, uh, what's, uh, they're going to be more concerned about the new iPhone coming out. Mm -hmm. But sadly, you know, we're, we're living now in a generation, if you take the iPhone away, if you take the smartphone away, then you don't have a very smart person. You, you got We're living in a generation where the phone is smarter than the person. If you take the phone away now, I, I, I don't know how to do math anymore. If we take the phone away now, I, I, don't, I don't know how to drive. I've I, I lost my direction. You know, so many now are, we're living in this generation, things are getting so dumbed down that people aren't using their brain anymore. People aren't picking up the word of God and learning it for themselves. We need a teacher to tell us this and that. The healthcare and pharmaceuticals, we, we're not educating ourselves how to stay healthy. We're, we're more concerned about popping pills now. Well, take this pill, but you take this pill, then four of the things come along with this. Four of the health issues come along with taking this pill. So you fix one health issue, and now you got four of the health issues. That's how they keep you in the system. That's how the banking elite wants you. They want you dependent on the system. That's why you hear me talk about in my videos, go to work. Go to See, it's, it's an ungodly thing to rely on others. And so when I see people take donations, but yet they don't have a job, something's very wrong with that. We're not to be that in that system, relying on others. You know, in, in Genesis chapter one, you know, or, or in Genesis anyway, you know, God put Adam in the garden and it was Adam's job to take care of the garden. So we are to be a body of believers that, that rise up and be hungry for the word of God. The banking elite and the central banks, one of the most, really, it's just the most corrupt thing that's happened to this nation. And it's brought the collapse of this nation economically. And then at the very bottom of this pyramid that I've got on the board, you know, see, you know, I used to think President Bush was a great president. But then we start to look at real, really what came out of his presidency. And we see what happened with 9-11, which 9-11 in its own was a very peculiar day where our government mysteriously, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it, it just mysteriously collapsed in every area you could possibly think of. And then we had all these changes of the law. We had to go to war and we had to get the Patriot Act where we were going to, we have to spy on people because, you know, all these strange things that, that really, when you look at it, it's like the forming of a one world government. We want to control the planet. We want to control the people. And then you look at when George W. Bush was exiting office, this mysterious collapse of our economy. And, oh, now we have to take this billions of dollars and bail out the banks and uh, corporations. Hmm. Wow. It's kind of like what Andrew Jackson said, you know. You know, then at the very bottom of the... Uh, Pyramid, we got the everyday people, the middle class, the working middle class, that is, that's getting crushed. You know, the rich find loopholes. Actually, the laws are made for the rich. You know, so only the rich know how to get the loopholes for the most part. And then you got the poor who don't work. And so who's 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 carrying the load? It's the middle class. The, the middle class is the ones getting crushed. And that's that's this that is the system here. That's the that's the plan of the banking elite to have us reliant in our education uh they, they want us drinking kool-aid from their media uh they want us living off of three dollar four dollar oil uh they want us unhealthy so we constantly have to go back to the, the to the to, to buy pills because they make money off of that keeping these corporations rich 
And then, of course, the, the World Wide Bank. And, you know, John F. Kennedy, another one of the presidents, you know, I, Andrew Jackson said he killed the bank, which he did. He was against the bank. And finally, he put the second bank, bank of the United States to death. Uh, John F. Kennedy, after the creation of, of the third central bank, you know, uh, many years later, uh, Kennedy, he, in June 4th, 1963, signed the law, Executive, Executive Order 11110, which uh, started to issue, the United States started to issue their uh, uh, their certificates, silver certificates, in, in other words, dollars backed by silver. And again, mysteriously, after his assassination, hmm, another president with an assassination attempt who uh, was against the central bank, this time successful with Andrew ja Jackson. Obviously, it was unsuccessful. After Kennedy's assassination, no more silver certificates uh, were issued after his death. Interesting how that worked out. Interesting how things worked out with George W. Bush in office and you know with 9-11, with uh, uh, the bailouts of the banks. Now we have the president now as a Democrat. Oh, thing change, 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 change. You know, you know, we can say things with our lips. And, you know, if anything that we are learning about Obama is, you know, we can speak, you know, come on, church. We can, we can say things with our lips all we want. See, the Lord's not looking at our lips. He's looking at our hearts. There's many Christians right now today. They're, they're saying things with their lips. They're saying great things with their lips. He said this in verse 23 of Matthew, or 22 in Matthew chapter 20, excuse me, Matthew 7, 22. This is what Jesus said. Many uh, would say to me, have we not prophesied? Many are prophesying, saying things with their lips. You know, even Obama's saying a lot of things with his lips. He's a great talker. And there's many Christians who are great talkers, but yet their heart, they have not given it to Christ. That's what Titus 116 says that, that they deny me with their actions. They saying one thing with their lips, but in their, with their heart, they're doing a whole nother thing. Proverbs 423 says, uh, uh, for out of the, the heart flows the issues of life. Hello, the Lord's looking at our heart. Thank God for signs. See, here in the end times, we're seeing signs. And so the signs are to wake us up. So we turn paths so we change directions even back in the days of Moses that's what the signs were for to wake the Pharaoh up but the Pharaoh chose to ignore the signs and continue the same direction and path in his heart his heart continually got more hardened so instead of the signs giving him a heart check you know that's like 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 13 5 it says the to, to, to see if we are truly in the faith, to, to take a heart check to see that we're truly in the faith. See, instead of the Pharaoh doing that, he continued to press on. And sadly, today, we have many who proclaim to be followers of Christ, many that are professing to know the Lord, but yet, with all the signs going on around us, they still continue to press in the same direction, still unrepentant, still have a prideful attitude, will not repent. Still on that broad path, still, still in, the, you know, they were partying beforehand, before they professed or, or, or prayed the prayer, and then partying after. No change. Look, if you're still hanging around the same crowd, doing the same thing, partying the same parties, then you probably haven't given your life to Christ. All you did was just change the, the, the door tag over, over, over the, you know, all you did, did was change the sign over the door. No, the Lord wants our hearts. If we believe with our hearts, it is to be regretted that the rich and powerful too often bend the acts of government to their own selfish purposes. This is the day we're living in. Ecclesiastes 1 9 says, There is nothing new under the sun. What's happened before will happen again. Like the Tower of Babel, there was that one world government. Of course, the Lord did away with that. And here we are again today. We're at the very end of days. We're at the very last of the time. Last days, I should say. So here's the deal. Are we going to wake up? Or are we going to play church games? Paul said in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that 
that many would have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Deny what? The, deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. I encourage you to read that. Do you want to receive the power of the Holy Ghost in your life? Do you want to be spirit-led? Galatians chapter 5. Talking about the, the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the Spirit. It said that those who are Christ have did what? Crucified the flesh. But there's many who say that if we do anything, that's that's negating the work of the cross. Huh? If we follow the word of God, that's negating the work of the cross. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean that that's just uh, you know that just pathetic that that some will actually teach that because Jesus said to be doers of the word. Matthew chapter 7 24 through 27 he's speaking of being doers of the word of God. Are we going to build our house on that rock? Or are we going to are we going to live by the world system? You know, it, it's it's interesting how the the, the uh, uh, the church is more considered about that 501c3 than they are teaching and preaching the truth of the word of God. The funny thing too is I thought there was a separation between church and state. So how is, uh, you know, it's funny how that works out, you know. It's time that we forget about the 501c3 and start getting into the word and teach them and preach the word of God. You know, I want to share some scriptures with you. You know, First Peter two nine says that we've been called out of darkness. We're we're we are a peculiar people. We should be peculiar, but sadly, many in the body of Christ they're not peculiar because they they're acting just like the world, if not worse than the world, because they think they can get away with it because they pray to prayer. And again, it's not about the prayer. The Lord doesn't care about our lips. He's looking at our hearts. Have we given our hearts to Christ? And you know, when we give our hearts to Christ, the Lord will give us new desires. I believe that's Psalms 37, 4. You know, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of our heart. You know, if your desire is not toward the Lord, that's probably because you haven't given your life to the, to the Lord. When, you, when we give our hearts to Christ, he will, he will birth in us new desires because now we are a new creation. A new creation is not going to do the same thing. New creation is not going to have the same desires. The Lord is going to give you new desires. He's going to birth new desires in you. He's going to take us from glory to glory. I want to take you now to Daniel chapter 3. As I start to conclude the video here. But I want to take you to Daniel chapter 3. I want to talk about faith. You know, Paul said in the last days that many would depart, that some shall depart the faith. This is 1 Timothy 4.1. Some shall depart the faith. Giving heed to seducing. See, seducing spirits are subtle. They don't just come out and say, hey, they're subtle. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So I'm going to talk about faith. 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 Because biblical faith, James chapter 1 and James chapter 2. James is speaking of faith. He's not talking about works of law. He's speaking of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, speaking of faith. That's why, again, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says to check to see that we are truly in the faith. Biblical faith. Not what America calls faith. Biblical faith. We find out what faith is by looking in the scripture. And I will say this. Faith follows Christ. Faith obeys the word. Faith. Real faith. Faith. Faith is nowhere in the scripture does it say faith is praying a prayer. Nowhere in the scripture does it say faith is just popping a pill. Okay. Daniel, I want to show you some faith here. Daniel, I, you know, this is a, look, we are to grow in the word from glory to glory. Look, we all make mistakes. We all make bad choices and bad judgments. When we do that, get up, dust ourselves off and continue to move forward. Mistakes will happen along the way, but we don't set our, we don't set up a tent. And get a sleeping bag and live there. So I encourage you, if you make a mistake or a bad choice, get up, dust yourself off, and continue to move forward in the Lord. And thank God for his mercy and grace to forgive us of those mistakes when we make them. But we don't live in those mistakes. We get up, dust ourselves off, and move forward. Now, in Daniel, 
Daniel had some friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is the kind of friends I want to have. I want to have some godly friends. I want to have some friends who says, you know, I'm not going to bend over backwards for nothing here. I'm going to, we're, we're going to seek the Lord. And so King Nebuchadnezzar says, that, hey, you know, when you hear the sound of the music, you're going to drop to your knees and you're going to bow down. And you're going to worship my golden idols. You don't, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And you're going to burn. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, uh, uh, whatever, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, we're going to worship the Lord God. We're not going to worship your graven images or whatever. So you can do what you do. They say, if we burn, we burn. But know this, we stand in the Lord. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar, the scripture says that he got so angry that his face distorted. He got so angry that his face distorted. They refuse to worship his gods. We follow our Lord. We follow the Lord God Almighty and we will not bow down. Now, that's the kind of faith. That's the kind of people I want to surround myself around. I don't want to surround myself around, around flaky Christians, windsurfing Christians this is what I call them, whichever way the wind blows. Windsurfing Christians, windsurfing, windsurfing Christians, you know what they do? They wait for the next biggest wave to come. They're like uh, doped up surfers waiting for the next big wave, the next exciting thing to come out. You know, 20, in, in 2009, there was a couple pastor couple from Canada. Oh, they heard from the Lord for sure. The rapture is taking place on Rosh Hashanah 2009. Then it didn't take place on Rosh Hashanah. And so they moved the date and they said it was the Lord's tearing. Well, they finally disappeared because, you know, obviously here it is 2013. We're still here. 2010, California. There's a pastor, me and my wife, we were watching this guy because we were both excited. We thought, you know, oh, you, you know, so the rapture is, is going to take place in 2010. Tribulation is going to start. And so rapture is taking place in 2010. We're out of here. And he said, oh, Pentecost is the day. Well, didn't happen on Pentecost. So then he says, oh, I've got, oh, I got the answer. It's, it's, it's Rosh Hashanah. I was mistaken. I heard wrong from the Lord. Well, it wasn't Rosh Hashanah in 2010 either. Oh, they came out a third time. Oh, it's, it's, oh, I see. No, the Lord, no, he corrected me again. It's, it's, it's actually Passover, which crossed into 2011, but Passover is truly the start of the new year, but we're going to be gone before Passover. Well, Passover passed and another false prophecy arise again. 2011. Let's go to 2011 now. Oh, here we go. The famous 2011 and the watching community. Now, this is something that, that, you know, I was sharing some rapture messages early on and I started feeling the Lord say, Marcus, Depart from the crowd. Marcus, depart from this and get back into the meat of the word and share the meat of the word. Oh, I remember uh, Rosh Hashanah 2011. This is like, you know, a couple of weeks before I really felt the Lord, uh, uh, or, or a few weeks before I felt the Lord give me this word, uh, was right before Rosh Hashanah 2011, weeks before that. And uh, I remember on Rosh Hashanah 2011, the rapture didn't take place again, like 2009 and 10 and, you know, all these other dates that people were saying the Lord's coming. And this particular person, you know, he, oh, I've got the, uh, this is it. I've got an answer. You know, I've, I've, you know, it was in contact with somebody and this is what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And this is why we're still here, but we're going to be gone shortly. And then so many people, you know, was like, oh, wow, wow. They're so excited. Oh, wow. And, and, and they're, they're sitting there. They're into idolatry because they're worshiping this teacher. Like, wow, your message is wow. I'm so glad. Wow, wow. And But yet, here we are, 2013. 2012, the old Mayan calendar. Oh, wow. The Mayan calendar. Oh, yes, the end of the world and this and that. Blah, 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 blah. I, you know, it's, it's like reruns of In the Heat of the Night. It's like, okay, I, I know what's getting ready to happen here. Well, here we are, 2013 now. 2013. You know, Matthew chapter 24, the disciples came to Jesus, said, tell us when would be the, the end of the age. Tell us when this time would be near. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, he says, when you see the 112th Pope arise, know that my coming is near. Wait, oh, wait a second. I'm reading out of the wrong book. 
And sadly, many out there are reading out of the wrong book too, because actually the Bible says, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name. This is the first warning he gave. Many shall come in my name saying that I am Christ. Christ being the anointed one. They're, they're anointed to share the word. They're anointed. They have a word. They have, they have the answer. Look, when man comes running to you, what the answer? Oh, I have the answer. I have the answer. This is it. This is it. Come on. It's kind of like Waco. Hello. Yeah. Waco. So many cults, so many people being deceived by men. Look, let's seek the word of God. Let's seek the truth of the word of God. That's where we're going to find truth. Jesus gave us the signs of the end in Matthew chapter 24. That's good enough for me. I don't need man's word. I don't need to get hyped up. I don't need to get into, look, I don't need to look for the next new wave. I don't need to worry about some pastor in Canada talking about rapture 2009 or pastor in California talking about rapture 2010 or somebody on YouTube talking about 2011 or the 2012 calendars. Look, forget the Mayans, forget the Pope, forget all this hype, trash, crap, forget it all. Or as the Bible calls it, dung. That's what it is. It's trash. Get in the word of God. Seek the face of Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't look to Marcus. Don't look to your pastor. Don't look to the favorite person on YouTube who's so charismatic and have the cutest smile. But oh, by the way, by the way, give to my account. You give to my account if you feel led. Look, if you feel led, you might have a pencil stuck in your arm. Jesus said to take heed that no man deceives you. And again, I'm a believer in giving. If that person is using it for the gospel to help people and share the word of God, give Bibles, help in, in feeding, give to the poor. Hey, I'm a believer in giving too. But too many, in the, you know, there's too many money changers in the church using the temple for other stuff, using the temple for their own gain. We have to make sure we have, uh, as the word calls it, uh, we have to discern and make sure that we are truly in the right place or giving to the right place. Now, I want to end this video with uh, a few scriptures to encourage you in the word of God. You know, one of the things, if you're waiting for the Lord, if you're waiting, as, as Luke 18 says, to keep seeking, don't give up. Keep on pressing. Keep on persevering. persevering. Matthew 7, 7, keep on asking, keep on knocking, keep on seeking, and the door will be answered. You know, Jeremiah 33, 3 says to call on me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. We're to keep seeking the face of the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 13 says to seek me. If you seek me, you will find. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Second Chronicles. 714 says, if you repent and seek my face, seek me with all your heart, then I will heal your land. Psalms 107 goes into all the accounts of those who were living a life apart from God, but then they, they came to their senses and called out on the name of the Lord. In each account in Psalms 107, the Lord shows up and delivers them. See, our God is a delivering God. Our God is a delivering God. He delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you, you see that kind of faith that they had. But then you look at Daniel. Daniel got in a similar situation. Daniel find, found himself in a similar circumstance. Where he was told not to see that, that there was a decree that went across the land that you couldn't pray to any other God but this, this golden or this statue. And when you, when you heard the, the sound of the music, Daniel decided, you know what, I'm going to continue to pray to my God. And Daniel continued as he normally did. His, he, he went to this upper, upper room and opened up the windows and prayed toward the east. He said, I don't care about that law that, that was passed. I'm going to worship my God. And then he found himself in the lion's den. But by faith in Christ, faith in God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. God says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Faith in the Lord God Almighty. And the Lord delivered Daniel. He shut the mouth of the lion. I'm talking about faith. Faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Multiple times in the scripture it says that the just shall live by faith. 
Not the just shall live by hype. Didn't say anything about the just shall live by the, you know, the Pope prophecies or mind calendars or this and that and this and, you know, common elements come, gonna come swoop us away. You know? Common element and all this other stuff. No, the just shall live by faith. And where does faith come from? Well, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I'm here to share with my wife. We're here to share the meat of the word of God, the truth of the word of God. We don't need to dress Jesus up and add things to Jesus to make him more exciting. Look, I'm excited about our Lord the way he is. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about his truth. I'm excited about his word. And you know what? I'm even learning to be excited about it when he rebukes me. Because when he rebukes me, that just means that I am his child. Mm -hmm. So many get uh, upset about a rebuke. No, that means that you're his child. If you're not receiving a rebuke from the Lord, then it's time to get worried. You know, one person said something about, you know, if if there's someone, other, other kid in the stores acting up, you know, and if that child's not yours... It's not for yours to rebuke. But if the child's yours, <laughs> you're going to rebuke. So thank God that the Lord rebukes me. That means I'm his. I'm not somebody else's. Hello? Hello? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. This is to, re to, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. So many people lusting after the next wave. Oh, what's the next exciting thing? Urgent, urgent, bold letters, vision, dream, space shuttle, explosion, rapture, pope, nonsense. Lusting after all that nonsense. No, no, I'm hungry for the world. Look, there's a body of believers rising up that are starting to hunger more and more after the word of truth, after the word of God. We're not to seek after all those things. We're to seek Jesus, Jesus. And lastly, Matthew chapter 14. I'm talking about looking on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking on the Jesus. This is, this is what Peter did, Matthew chapter 14. They're in, middle of that, they're in the middle of that storm, in the middle of that lake, in trouble. Jesus comes to them walking on the water and they start freaking out. And then and Jesus says, oh, no, don't worry. It is I. I am that I am. I am that I am. And Peter's still not sure. Whoa, whoa, Lord, it's, if it's really you, allow me to come to you by walking. See, Peter wasn't even sure. Jesus said, Jesus spoke a word. He said, come. See, when the Lord speaks, that's the word of God. See, uh, we either going to obey the word of God or we're going to ignore it. Well, there were some disciples that chose to stay in the boat. Peter says, well, I'm going to rock the boat. Say, are, are you scared to rock the boat? Are you scared to go against the flow? Do, do you just want to, you want to fit in? See, so many people just want to fit in. No, I don't want to fit in. I want to be like a salmon upstream, jumping the waterfalls, doing the, you know, that's like, that's like a miracle. A salmon can jump a waterfall. Are you serious? The flow, the, that's a miracle. But that's the, that's the, that's the way our faith is. Our faith causes, we can do all things, hello, through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about moving upstream. I'm talking about departing the bottom of the mountain where the party is at. You know, and the, you know, the, the, how's that party work for? I mean, the, the, the ground kind of opened up and swallowed some of them up anyway. How does that work out for them? Do you want to hang around the party all the time? You want to hang around the hype crowd? You want to go with the flow. That's, that's, you're not going to find the Lord there. You know, the eagles fly high and they fly alone. Chickens, they hang in crowds low. You want to hang around the low places? Or do you want to be the peculiar people? Like First Peter 2, 9, we're, we are peculiar people, a chosen generation. We've been called out of darkness into his glorious light. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Yes. Peter. Stepping over that boat with his eyes on the answer. See, your, your pastor's not the answer. Your little favorite YouTube preacher, false prophet preacher or whatever, who doesn't teach the word of God. He's not your answer. Even the teacher who teaches the word of God. He's not the answer. I'm not the answer. Jesus is the answer. 
Peter, with his eyes focused on Jesus, started to walk with his eyes focused on Jesus. And the scripture says, but when he when he started, to, when he felt the strong wind and waves blowing, he took his eyes off Jesus and started to sink. See, Jesus is our answer. Keep your eyes on Jesus. But thank God we have a merciful God, a graceful God, who says that, call on me. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's Romans 10, 13. Well, that's what Peter did. Peter did a Romans 10, 13, call on the name of the Lord. And the scripture says immediately, Jesus reached out and saved him. I'm talking about faith. Peter had a faith. He may have gotten weak in his faith, but his faith caused him to get up and jump out of that boat and stop hanging around the crowd. Sometimes you got to leave some people in the boat. That's the, That's what faith does. Faith will leave people in the boat sometimes. Sometimes you have to move upstream and get away from the crowd. So I just encourage us in these last days where there are so many things. You know, 2014, there's probably going to be something else. It's probably going to be, like I said, Bigfoot or something. Bigfoot <laughs> sighting somewhere, you know, Bigfoot, you know, something. It's always something. I just encourage us all to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our